I wish you were um, in your, your role as leader of the technical Taoiseach, uh, this is the first chance the doll has had to discuss the horrific case of a clinically dead pregnant woman kept alive for 23 days in December against her family's wishes. I'd like to convey the sympathies of the Anti-Austerity Alliance to her family, who had to endure the tragic loss of their young daughter and then watch the indignities that were heaped upon her and who were forced into the courts to be allowed to bury their daughter over Christmas, all solely due to the fears doctors had about the Eighth Amendment. Now, Taoiseach, you've said this is a personal case, it's highly sensitive, etc., etc., as if we should keep out of the matter. But it's the state that's preventing people making personal decisions about highly sensitive matters, not the other way around. Dr Peter Boylan, former master of the National Maternity Hospital, said that what was done to this tragic woman was grotesque and experimental. And let's be clear, it was the Eighth Amendment that led to this. No 15-week fetus has ever survived to delivery anywhere on the planet. But doctors told the family this attempt was being made for constitutional reasons. The resultant details are highly disturbing, but people need to hear the reality of having this law in place. This woman had a ventilator inserted, a tracheostomy tube in her neck, six syringe pumps for drugs to stop infections, and makeup applied for when her children came to visit to make her look something like she had been. It's all the more incredible that doctors felt they had to take this course of action when an A&E &E in bed crisis was escalating around them. And we end up with legal representation for the unborn and a deceased woman all because of the Eighth Amendment. Now, Taoiseach, this is the third high-profile case of a woman <coughs> being abused by the Eighth Amendment under your watch. This weekend, you marched down the boulevards of Paris against religious fundamentalism. Thank you. The question is, Taoiseach, are you willing to allow the Irish people the chance to remove a law which is the envy of religious fundamentalists around the world? Or were you just strutting and posing for liberty in Paris while maintaining women as vessels and incubators at home, alive or dead? And finally, Taoiseach, the question is, are you going to seriously hold a raft of referendums in May and refuse to allow people their say on the Eighth Amendment? You say you don't have a mandate. You can go and get a mandate by having a referendum. There's no time impediment to you holding a referendum to see what the will of the people is at the time. And that goes for the Labour Party's excuses as well. Thank you. So will you hold a referendum in May alongside marriage equality and other questions and will you lift the shackles off doctors and off women as well? Thank you. Tisha. Um, I was happy and privileged to represent the Irish people in, in Paris this week. And that was uh, an absolute uh, atrocity based uh, on uh, terror and, uh, and fear. I think the uh, demonstration of uh, support by the ordinary citizens of France and the leadership of the European Union demonstrated the importance of the why we have a European Union. Uh, this was a sensitive case in Mullingar. It was a personal case, and it wasn't a case of uh, turning a blind eye to the situation. Uh, remember, Deputy Coppinger, that the, the Constitution, Bunrath Naharan, is the people's book. It is they who put it together. It is they who vote on it. It is they who have the sole responsibility of changing it if they so desire. However, in this particular case, uh, the courts uh, determined that the Eighth Amendment did not prevent the turning off of the uh, life-sustaining uh, equipment. It wasn't a case of the Eighth Amendment uh, restricting uh, the decision that had to be made here. Deputy Coppinger. Well, Taoiseach, uh, I agree with you. The Constitution is in place. Allow people to change it. That's what I'm asking. Hold a referendum and allow people to overturn a decision that was taken 31 years ago at the behest of a Catholic lobby and nobody else. Now, you say the Eighth Amendment didn't prevent the uh, life support being turned off. But it's the reason that doctors were fearful in the first place. 
The man sitting to your left there talked about the chilling effect of do on doctors of the Eighth Amendment when he had knowledge of the case, and he was right. Um, doctors said, and this is a quote from the, the court case, we are unclear what to do in light of the Eighth Amendment. Uh, Dr. Peter Boylan, very authoritative and used as a state witness in the case as well, said repeal of the Eighth Amendment would be even more helpful than medical guidelines. The, the point about Paris was this, you strutted and you strode up the Champs-Élysées with loads of other Western leaders ostensibly against religious fundamentalism while you're presiding at home over a host of laws, including blasphemy, by the way, but also a law that's Question, so anti-woman, so medieval and so misogynist that there's no way that any religious fundamentalist would seek to have it put in place. My key point is this. You have a chance in May to resolve this. There's no impediment to you holding a referendum on this in line with marriage equality and some other referendums that you're thinking of. And I'd ask you, Taoiseach, will you give time for this to be discussed in the Dáil, which it hasn't been, and in light of the tragedy that unfolded over Christmas when a macabre ordeal was visited on that family and what they were put through, which all of the doctors testified was for constitutional reasons and the existence of the Eighth Amendment. Let people have their say. And I'd say to the Labour Party, don't sit over this atrocity any longer. We can't afford it any more. Horrific, we can't afford to have any more horrific cases coming to light of Thank women you. being treated as vessels and incubators in this way. Thank you. Please, uh, I, 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 think, I think you should bear in mind, Deputy Coppinger, that the, the family involved here uh, requested privacy. And I think you can understand that they don't want, uh, in this case, this individual case, discussed here in, in the Dáil. I respect their request for privacy. Now, there are two referenda to be held in the month of May, one on the question of the uh, eligibility limit for the presidency, which was a recommendation from the People's Constitutional Convention, the second on the question of marriage equality, which also was a recommendation from the People's Constitutional Convention. Both of these referendums will be held uh, in the month of May. Um, I don't know, Deputy Coppinger, whether you were actively involved in any of the campaigns uh, in the 80s uh, when these amendments were considered previously. I've already said that there will not be uh, another referendum during the course of the lifetime of this government. This is, a, this is a battle that you can blithely say should be considered by way of referendum in the month of May. I don't think, Deputy Coppinger, that you realise at the scale of the challenge uh, that, that, uh, that would be involved here. Uh, it's all too easy for you to say, remove the Eighth Amendment. I'd like to hear you tell me what you propose to replace it with. Thank you. That completes leaders' questions for today. We now move on to the...